Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today I just got back home from Gamescom 2019 in Cologne, Germany, where I tried a bunch of brand new VR games and experiences. Now last year was my very first Gamescom and I got to try out some really cool VR content at the event so I definitely wanted to head back this year. Now this time around I got to try out a lot more VR games coming soon for both PC VR and Oculus Quest so I thought I'd do a nice little roundup of what I got to play and experience at the event this year finishing up with my personal highlights of the show which you won't want to miss. I've put timestamps in the description down below as always so I hope you guys and girls enjoy this recap of all the VR content I tried at Gamescom 2019 and without further ado let's dive in. Okay, so let's kick off this VR roundup with Colosseum Soccer VR from Kainoa. Now this was a really fun four player fuzzball table experience with a virtual reality twist. Just like a traditional fuzzball table, the players control two rotating poles each to control the players on their half of the pitch and this is represented in real time in VR. Now the benefit of playing in VR is that all kind of crazy effects and modifiers can be added to the gameplay to spice things up a bit. For example, you can collect power-ups to take out your opponent's players, you can use shields to protect your own team, and the little football players will celebrate in style after scoring a goal. You can see the people you're playing with represented as holograms on the edges of a stadium, with a huge crowd around you and scoreboards at either end. This was a really fun local multiplayer experience, and after each game we just wanted to play another round. You can play Coliseum Soccer VR without the fuzzball table if you want, as it's available in early access right now on Steam. However, using the table is really what made this game so much fun to play, so I would say it's more suited to VR arcades than playing it at home. Next up is After the Fall from Vertigo Games, and this felt like the natural evolution of Vertigo's previous VR title, Arizona Sunshine. It's still a zombie shooter, however this time around it's set in the frozen ruins of LA, 20 years after a devastating apocalypse. Now I got to play a very early demo of the game in co-op mode with one of the developers, and I was getting some serious Left 4 Dead vibes. The game can be played solo or with up to four players in co-op. Sadly, I can't show any of the gameplay, but to give you a brief overview, my play session started at the top of a cold, crumbling building where I could look through the cracks in the floor to see the levels below. We worked our way down the levels, taking out hordes of frozen zombies called the Snowbreed, and collecting scrap items which are used to upgrade weapons and gear. Now the environments and weapons looked great, and using my gun-mounted torch at the beginning to cut through the darkness added to the creepy atmosphere. I was armed with a pistol or Uzi in my right hand, and a spiked baseball bat in my left hand to keep the enemies at bay. My favourite part of the demo was finding this wrist mounted rocket launcher which could fire a barrage of mini rockets taking out crowds of zombies at a time which was really satisfying and made me feel a bit like Iron Man. During the playthrough I encountered these mini boss zombies just like you can find in Left 4 Dead and finished up the demo dispatching this huge intimidating frozen monster. Right now it's still very early days and the game isn't due for release until next year. I did give some feedback to the developers about the reloading mechanics as it was all done automatically in this demo which personally I didn't like and I suggested that the game would feel much more intense if you had to reload manually and rely on your co-op partners to cover you during these moments making communication key. And secondly I advised them that hoovering up all the scrap items that are littered around the levels wasn't particularly fun and it would be better suited to finding the loot in caches stored around the level instead. But overall I think it's a great start to the game and I'm definitely looking forward to playing this title next year with four players in cooperative mode. Also, whilst with Vertigo Games, I got to try out their latest DLC to Arizona Sunshine called The Damned. Now, this story precedes the events of Arizona Sunshine and the previous DLC, which was called Dead Man. And in this story, you're tasked with reactivating the generators of a massive hydroelectric dam to restore power to the military's nuclear missile systems. Essentially, it's more of the same zombie shooting we already know and love from the Arizona Sunshine series, and it's roughly twice the size of the previous DLC. I checked out this demo 
on the valve index and had a few issues collecting ammo with the new index controllers so hopefully that gets ironed out prior to the release but it was great to be back in the great outdoors again in Arizona sunshine for the section that I played because this was something that I missed when playing the dead man DLC which mainly took place deep inside a dark military bunker a port of Arizona sunshine is still being worked on for the oculus quest so if you're a quest owner who hasn't played the game already you're in for a treat although no word on a release window just yet Next is Tracy Laser from Hastily Assembled, a small indie title in development right now where you take the role of a retired secret agent who is called back into service after a mysterious distress signal is discovered. What made this demo interesting is that it's a room scale game where you have to physically walk around your play space. It uses redirected walking and non-Euclidean spaces, just like in the T for God demo on Quest and PC. The game cleverly uses moving platforms, lifts and corridors to give you a sense of freely moving through an environment where in reality you're just moving around in circles and figures of eight within your play space. I played the demo on the Vive Pro with the Vive wireless adapter but the developers are keen to bring the game over to Oculus Quest as this would be ideal for tetherless VR headsets. It's still in early days right now but one to keep an eye on. Next, I got to play Budget Cuts 2 from Neat Corporation on the Valve Index, although it was a bit strange as they were using the Vive 1s with the Index headset for this demo. The game leads on from the previous title and promises to add more variety in terms of scenarios, environments, puzzles and combat. In this sequel, you're still up against the robot uprising and it uses the same great tool selection mechanics of the previous title, allowing you to teleport by shooting portals around the environments and giving you the opportunity to peek through them to check that the coast is clear before moving on. To spice things up even more, this time round you have access to a badass bow, which was a lot of fun to use to dispatch the evil robots silently from a distance. Hopping across rooftops, sneaking around and getting the drop on the robots with the bow was a lot of fun and made the gameplay feel fresh. If you enjoyed the original budget cuts, you won't want to miss this one coming out by the end of the year. Also, whilst with the crew at Neat Corporation, they showed me their other VR title called Garden of the Sea, which is a very different game from Budget Cuts. This takes place on a small, vibrant island where you can grow your own garden, take care of adorable wildlife, and sail around the island in your own little boat. This was so relaxing to play, and it felt like a little retreat from the busy show floor at Gamescom. This game was really giving me Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley vibes, as you'll be gathering resources, crafting, maintaining your garden, Garden and interacting with these cute little creatures. Also unique to Garden of the Sea is that it features a hybrid interactive score. Every single musical note is created in real time based on your in-game interactions. So whether you're digging, chopping or moving to a new environment, the score changes to reflect those actions, meaning that what you hear at any given time is entirely unique to your experience. The game is already available on Steam right now in early access and Neat Corporation are welcoming community feedback through their Discord so they can grow the game with the features that the community wants. Next up is The Walking Dead Onslaught from the team at Servios. Now I was really looking forward to this one as Servios have a reputation of making quality VR titles and this was no exception. In this game you can choose to play either Rick or as Michonne in a unique Walking Dead story set in the later seasons of the show. They even have some of the original actors from the show providing voiceovers for this game which is a really nice little touch. You can play this game solo or with a friend playing cooperatively together. I played this demo solo moving through a series of streets and abandoned buildings, dispatching walkers en route to a pickup point. The action was fun and brutal because you can push, shoot, grab, stab or slash zombies which results in limbs and bits of the walkers falling off which is really satisfying. Although it was a bit glitchy at times I have to say. The developers even stated that when playing with two players, one player can hold the zombie in place while the other takes its head off with a baseball bat, which I thought was really, really cool. Pushing and grabbing zombies by the throat and attacking them at point blank range results in a gruesome and bloody execution, which is exactly what you'd expect from a Walking Dead game. I got to try out a range of weapons in my playthrough, including a pistol, shotgun, assault rifle, knife, and of course the iconic Lucille baseball bat from the show. As we know though, from the Walking Dead, the walkers aren't actually the biggest threat. It's other survivors. So hopefully we get to see more of that in the full game as it was just zombies that I encountered in my demo. Although I thought the gameplay was fun it did feel very arcadey with knife trails which follow your slashing motions, action overlays and highlighted loot scattered around the environments. So 
it is a bit arcadey feeling. Despite that though, I am looking forward to playing through the game with a friend when it launches later this year. Next up is The Wizards Dark Times from Carbon Studios. This is a standalone expansion which takes place after the events of the original game called The Wizards. The demo I played featured some really cool gesture based spell casting which included fireballs, an ice bow which you could split into two into these ice daggers, a shield and a force push spell. After a short while I got into the various gestures and was easily able to select the weapon I wanted to use for each enemy encounter. Using the gestures felt really natural and almost felt like being Doctor Strange from the Marvel Universe. And personally, my favorite combo was to freeze an enemy with the ice bow and then blow them to pieces using a force push spell. In the full game, developers want to encourage players to combine elements and spells to create unique combos. For example, a frozen enemy hit with a fireball will then become wet, making them vulnerable to a lightning attack. Along with the Farden combat, I also encountered some light puzzles, which added some variety and pacing to the gameplay. The fantasy environments of Meloria looked great, with lots of detail and color, and you can navigate through these environments using a combination of smooth locomotion, teleportation, and climbing sections. The Wizards Dark Times will be releasing on PC and Oculus Quest next year. Next is Down the Rabbit Hole, and this game came so close to being my favorite game of the show. I played this on Oculus Quest, but the game will also be releasing on PC and PSVR later this year. In this game, you control a girl who's accidentally stumbled down a rabbit hole into the crazy world of Alice in Wonderland. You play through a series of small dollhouse-like rooms, which completely wraps around you in 360 degrees, and you encounter some of the most iconic characters from the Alice in Wonderland story. As you you delve deeper down the rabbit hole, you can freely rotate 360 degrees in your play space or move the world around you by grabbing hold of tree roots in the environment. As the levels never unload, even as you get deeper into the game, you can always look up the rabbit hole to see where you started. You control and swap between the girl and her unusual sidekick, who's a playing card called Four and a Half. And during the narrative story sections, you see it unfold from her point of view. The gameplay is a mix of platforming, exploring, and puzzles, which were actually quite challenging, even from the start, which I thought was great as it will make the experience all that more rewarding once completed. Definitely an interesting title to keep your eyes on. And next, this is the game that was my favorite game of the show. It's called Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets, and it's being developed by Fast Travel Games for PC, PSVR, and Oculus Quest. This game was really relaxing to play. You're guided by the voice of your grandfather, and together you have to solve the mystery of the stolen pets by exploring these detailed miniature worlds. It has this bright, gorgeous, and colorful art style, which reminded me of Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker on the Nintendo Switch, mixed with the miniature city you can overlook in the Oculus Dream Deck. You can freely walk around or rotate the little world in front of you to solve puzzles, find hidden coins, and discover the missing pets. Now, I love puzzle games in VR, and this was just so charming with its beautiful art style and animation, and it was super chill to play. I did find this first level very simple to solve, so I hope the game gets more challenging later on, but I'm definitely looking forward to playing more when it releases later this year. And finally, my highlight of the show was Birdly VR. Now this is one of those experiences that you can only really try at an event or at a VR arcade, and I've always wanted to try it out myself. Now, unlike the previous flying machines, which I tried at last year's Gamescom, the Birdly has moving wings, which you can actually use to flap your wings and fly, which is an amazing feeling. In the demo, I tried you were a pterodactyl flying around a beautiful Jurassic environment filled with mountains, rivers, and dinosaurs. Flying high and then diving towards the ground and then furiously flapping your wings back into the sky was an exhilarating experience. The Birdly machine tilts and moves based on your actions in game. You can also rotate your hands to bank and swoop through the open world environment. To add to the experience, the Birdly has a huge fan strapped to the front of it which blows wind in your face depending on your speed in game and makes it feel that much more immersive. Birdly also has some other experiences on offer including flying through New York and exploring coral in an under the sea experience which I'd love to try out in the future. If you ever see Birdly VR at an event, I'd highly recommend you give it a go. Okay, so that's my roundup of all the VR content I tried at Gamescom this year. Now, sadly, I didn't get to try everything that was on offer at the event as I only had 24 hours in Germany, and in hindsight, I maybe should have stayed a little bit longer. 
I missed out on Iron Man on the PSVR, which I was really excited about trying, and I missed out on meetings with people like the Beat Saber team and Cybershoes who I met at Gamescom last year. I did get to see some of my fellow VR content creators though, such as my traveling buddy Gamertag VR, Nathy, Cass from Cass and Cherry, Voodoo DE, and MRTV. It's always great to meet up with these people in real life, as generally I only get to see them in the virtual world. I also want to give a shout out to Andreas Juliusson from Fast Travel Games who organized the excellent VR game showcase with Perp Games and they were keeping all the VR developers and games in one place which made it easy to meet all these people and it was a fantastic idea and I really hope this happens again at future events. If you enjoyed this video please let me know in the comments down below and let me know out of all the games and experiences I played which one you would like to play the most. I'd love to know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you like the video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.